Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church, as we mark the fourth Sunday in Lent. And our song of gathering is on a song sheet this morning. It's called All Are Welcome, which is kind of like our theme song here in the ANCC, right? All Are Welcome. Would you please stand if you're able? All are welcome in this place, behold love's amazing grace. All are welcome, all are welcome. Bring your hopes, bring your dreams, mercy flows and love redeems. All are welcome, all belong. amazing grace all are welcome all are welcome bring your hopes bring your dreams mercy flows and love redeems all are welcome all belong welcome all who suffer violence all who long for safety and for peace you are not alone, for you are God's own. Together we sing and we proclaim. All are welcome in this place, be all love's amazing grace. All are welcome, all are welcome. Bring your hopes, bring your dreams, mercy flows and love redeems. All are welcome, all belong, all are welcome, all belong, all are welcome, all belong. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In so many ways, I was thinking right before Mass how the weather is uh, maybe a real uh, experiential, incarnational experience of the mercy of God that falls as gentle rain on us always, right? And so as we begin our liturgy today, in the readings, we're going to hear, uh, as we did last week, how God's forgiveness and his love always invites us home. So as we do always, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings, aware that this God who loves us always brings us healing and forgiveness. And together we say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God, the Father, of mercies to the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the mystery of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Kyrie. Amen. 
Let us pray. God of compassion, you await the sinner's return and spread a feast to welcome home the lost. Save us from the temptations that lead us away from you and draw us back to the constancy of your love that we may take our place in your household and gladly share our inheritance with others. Grant this through Christ, our liberator from sin, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy, mighty God forever and ever. Amen. 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 It's a reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. While the children of Israel were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the children of Israel no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces not blush with shame. When the poor one called out the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, 
not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I will get up and go to my Father, and shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. The young man would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? And here am I dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion and ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine it was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, your brother has come home, 
and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. And then the elder son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And then the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> By the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be blotted away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We welcome Father Vincent with us today, who is fresh off his honeymoon, so, so that's why we put him to work, so to read the gospel. Today is Leitare Sunday, right? We wear rose, right? And so, uh, so Leitare uh, is the Latin phrase for the introit, rejoice, rejoice Jerusalem. I was thinking so much about the readings and about this being Leitare Sunday and how God always cares for us. So the church is God's visible instrument in the world to express the, express the compassion of Christ, to express the dimension of God, which is compassionate. And so we hear that in all of the readings today, in the first reading from Joshua, we hear how God's sensitivity to the people that he called from slavery in Egypt through the Red Sea, 40 years in the desert, have finally reached their home. Home, as you know, is not necessarily a place or a physical structure, although it can be a house, right? But home is a place in which you and I feel completely welcomed and at ease and not judged. And so the people of Israel wandering through the desert uh, with their ups and downs, their their faithlessness and their faithfulness arrive in, uh, in, the, in the promised land and the manna stops, right? God's sensitivity to the people of Israel who no longer needed that, it stops. And it might reflect for you and I that our Eucharist will cease as well when we are uh, uh, enjoying the heavenly banquet. And so we see God's love and care for us. And then in the, God, in the, in the second reading from Corinthians, this is so important, uh, and I was thinking that about Leitare Sunday, how God gives us this Sunday, both in Advent and in Lent, as a way to support maybe our flagging spirits, right? God gives us a moment uh, in a visual expression of the church's liturgy that Easter is almost here, that the sun will be rising in the east, and so the, the rose color of the vestment reminds us that our story doesn't end uh, uh, at Calvary, but begins at the resurrection. And so Christ rose, as the vestments are, Christ rose from the dead, right? And so you and I are given this reminder, the church's care for us, which is God's compassion to us, gives us this Sunday that we might, uh, we might restore our strength to continue the rest of our Lenten journey. The second reading, St. Paul's writing to the church at Corinth. This is the second letter that he writes because he's a little frustrated with the church at Corinth, right? <clears throat> they, were, they, were, they, were, uh, uh, they were a church that he had founded, but sometimes I would wander in different ways. And so he was writing to them and to you and I, and it's so true when we hear this in the gospel, that we are a new creation in Christ. We are something new. That's what you and I are doing during this Lenten season. Our first Sunday of Lent, we had Jesus uh, in the desert being tempted. The second Sunday, we had Jesus up on the mountain. The third Sunday, we had the parable of the, bar of the barren fig tree, uh, fig tree in which um, the, uh, the, the, the allegory of God in there allows the tree not to be cut down, but to see if it bears more fruit, the mercy of God. And in this Sunday, we have 
what I think, uh, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, we could call Forgiveness Sunday. We have the story, again, of God's compassion, God's absolute uh, <laughs> relentless love for us. This also is not simply about mercy. It is about justice. It is about God understanding that we are his creation and repentant or unrepentant, he will not let us alone. He will always welcome us back. It is a sense of God's justice to us. And so on this Laetare Sunday, you and I are given an image of the church uh, uh, at Easter when we will rejoice again, when we, like St. Paul tells the Corinthians, will be made new because at baptism we were grafted to the body of Christ. We were made, uh, we died to ourselves and rose to the graces of baptism. At confirmation, we confirm that. And at Easter, we will be all made new again because of our Lenten journey, our journey of, uh, that, of metanoia, of conversion, of changing our minds and our hearts so that we might return to God and be made new again at Easter and proclaim that message to all the world. This is an astounding reading for us on the fourth Sunday of, of Lent, uh, this, this story of the, of the prodigal son. Jesus uses the, the, the parable, the parabolic teaching, uh, as a way, I think sometimes I, I kind of use an Ignatian form of meditation, putting yourself in the, in the place where this is happening. And always the scribes and the Pharisees kind of get a bad rap, right? But in so many ways, what I think is every time Jesus tells one of these parables uh, as an instructive way to show the compassion of God, he is inviting the Sadducees and the Pharisees, like the elder brother, to rethink uh, their rigidity around what it is that they're doing. He invites them always. I know this. I've had it in my own experience. Sometimes I want something so badly from somebody that I get angry when they won't give it to me, and then when they do, I don't want it, right? No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm absolutely good, right? And I think that's a little bit like the older brother, right? He's kind of angry at the mercy of his father. He's a little envious of his brother in some ways, as we are. So in so many ways, when we hear this scripture today, we can identify uh, with many of the, uh, many of the, of the, of the uh, characters in, this, in the parable itself. But I was thinking, I looked up the word uh, prodigal. Do you know what prodigal means? I looked it up, I had to look it up. It comes from the Latin, and it means uh, extravagant and lavish spending, right? Isn't that true? Sometimes I've been prodigal. I use a little retail therapy, right? So, right? right? And so, so this idea that we could call this the story of the pro prodigal father, we could call this the story of the prodigal older brother, because prodigal is this lavish spending this lavish, uh, unreasonable kind of spending. And what we hear is that's what the younger son did, but that's also what the father did. He lavishly, he, he without thought, just spent all his mercy and love on his son when he saw his son from afar. Isn't this astounding, right? The older brother was a little bit prodigal in his bitterness, right? In his resentment. He too was, uh, was certainly spending that coin in a way that might reflect how we come to understand our relationship with God. So when we hear this reading, uh, we always want to maybe focus on the merciful father and the prodigal son, which I think is good, right? Because that is the, the allegory here is the, the, father is, uh, the, the father in the story is God for us. And you and I know this. Uh, because of the, of the, of the uh, passion and death and resurrection of our Lord, uh, uh, Christ has won for us our salvation. There's nothing we can do or, uh, to add or detract from that. And so what we have to do is learn the qualities of God in our own life, which are mercy and forgiveness and justice. And so we hear this, and Jesus is inviting the Pharisees and the Sadducees to please listen to this. The beginning of this gospel begins, right, that the sinners and the tax collectors were being drawn to Jesus. I wonder why. I wonder why you and I are drawn to Jesus Sunday after Sunday. I wonder why you and I are drawn to Jesus in the midst of our prayer. I wonder why in the depths of our heart and the quiets of our mind, you and I are drawn to the person of Jesus. I think it's because we know very much like the compassion of God, he doesn't judge us. God knows everything about us. He knows the number of hairs on our head he knows everything about us and he still loves us. Isn't that astounding? Who knows everything about you and still loves you, right? right? Hopefully there are people in our life who show us that in some ways, right? But this is a God who loves us despite ourselves. It is astounding, isn't it, right? And so we hear this, we hear this in so many ways in the context of, of, of Jesus' hearers, just so you know, 
for uh, a son to ask for his inheritance was to wish his father dead. And so uh, even to this day uh, in Palestine, and uh, if this story is told, I was listening to a priest in a homily, and he was in uh, Palestine, and he was telling this story to two young Palestinian uh, brothers. And uh, the one brother said, why, why didn't the older brother kill him immediately? This would be so offensive in an honor-shame society that you would ask for your inheritance, because what it indicates is that you not only would wish your father uh, to dead, but that also you abandon your obligation to care for him in his old age. So, so, that, so the younger son uh, does probably what is the most shameful thing because the property belonged to the family. It would have had to have been halved and sold to a stranger. It was a tremendous deal. And so, so Jesus' hearers would have had some sense of that. And so the younger son does it anyway, right? Talk about self-will run riot, right? I want what I want and I want it yesterday, right? And so he goes and we hear that he has squandered it on dissolute living. Right? How many times have we squandered the love of another person? How many times have we taken for granted the love of God in our own lives sometimes? How many times have we taken for granted the love of another in our lives? And so, so we can identify with the younger son, but also because you're here today and I'm here today, I also know that we have the experience of confessing our sins, of asking for forgiveness and moving back into relationship. And so the father sees his son from a far distance and he runs to greet him. <clears throat> the patriarch would have never ran to greet the younger person. Again, Jesus in the Gospel of Luke challenges all the societal notions of who God is. And he runs to greet him. And in the Greek, he does, we hear he kisses his neck, right? But in the Greek it is he slathers him with kisses. Isn't that means he slathers him with kisses. I can imagine the son who is dirty and filthy who is a Jew and had to tend pigs, right? Like that would have been so offensive at so many levels for him. But here's the father who doesn't care what he looks like or smells like, right? And slathers him with kisses. That's astounding. And then he says, bring the finest robe. The finest robe would have belonged to the father. Give him a ring. He seals the covenant. Give him sandals for his feet. Slaves don't wear sandals, right? He begins to restore the relationship of father to son. It's amazing, right? This is my son. This is my son who was dead and has now returned. So the older brother, maybe the Pharisees and the Sadducees, maybe you and I, right? Who have been slavishly rigid and paying attention and serving God as a slave almost, right? So we hear in that some sense of obligation rather than joy and intention. We hear that, right? The older brother comes and, and still, uh, uh, as, as Jesus is inviting the Pharisees and the Sadducees to think about their relationship with God as God's children, the other son distances himself even more. And so he says, this son of yours, right? Not my brother, but this son of yours, right? Has squandered everything. And then he says, you did not even give me a kid for me and my friends. Not for me and my family, but for me and my friends. His envy and his anger at the mercy of the Father has extended so much that it puts him outside of the relationship that God wants with us, right? Which is we as, as God, as our, as our shepherd, as our father, and we as his children. And so there's so much in these Gospels of Lent that invite you and I to maybe think about where our life needs to be converted, where we have to stop being so fixed and, and rigid on how we view other people. And, and, and you know this, I, I, I experience this too. You know, the worst thing that we can probably uh, live with with ourselves is envy, right? Which is the almost upsetment that someone else is doing better than we, right? Isn't that something, right? That, and that's what the older son, that's what Jesus was saying to the, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Stop being envious. Join these people who, because of their knowledge of their sinfulness, know the mercy of God and they know their need for the love of God. Don't be so far off from the family, right? Don't be so distant that you can't experience that your need uh, is as great as theirs, but you hide behind that with the, your, your long phylacteries and your long prayers and the knowledge of the law, right? It's an amazing, it's an amazing story for you and I to enter into our own metanoia, our own conversion experience during the season of Lent. 
Yesterday evening, I was invited uh, to uh, celebrate, participate with the Zoroastrian community. Zoroastrians are the oldest still practiced monothe monotheistic religion in, in the world. It predates Judaism. Uh, uh, it, it laid the foundation for a monotheistic God. And so it's a very ancient uh, religion. And I was very honored, uh, Bill and I, to participate in that. And so at the be in the beginning of the, uh, or uh, when you walk into the temple, there's a big stone tablet. And there was a gentleman there who was very knowledgeable about <clears throat> Zoroastrianism. And uh, so I was wondering, I talked to the priest. It's, a, it's an inherited priesthood. So the father is a priest, and then the son becomes a priest. And so I was you know, trying to get a little information. So I, I wondered, do you, go to, do you go to a seminary? Is there a theology, right? And, uh, and so I love this. He said, this is our theology. He said that the uh, three uh, important elements of Zoroastrianism, and you can hear this reflected in our own gospels and our own scriptures, is, uh, is good thoughts, uh, good words, and good actions. That's it. And I thought, boy, you don't need a lot of theology around that, right? But it's the idea of metanoia, of changing our minds and our hearts. It's hard. Have good thoughts. Think about that. Think about praying for the people who you are most angry at, that God would give them everything you ask for yourself. It is a way to change our thoughts, right? And when we change our thoughts, we change our hearts, and then we change our way of being in the world. It really is an astounding message for us in this gospel. Jesus is talking to the people who uh, will read in the Passion, eventually uh, uh, murder him because of his command to love was, uh, was, 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 a, was a, a radical command, and, it's, and it threatened the foundation of the institutions, as love does for us, right? Because if we really love, this would be a very different world, right? And so as you and I gather on this fourth Sunday of, uh, of Lent, and we hear this gospel of the parable of the, or the parable of the prodigal son, we might ask uh, uh, to consider how prodigious God's mercy and love has been to us and how we are invited, right, uh, uh, like the Father in the gospel, to extend that to everyone we meet. So let's continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, or other being with the Father, through God all things are made, for us is our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born by the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious power. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the one Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's children, we now offer our prayers and petitions to our merciful Father. Sorry, I have to explain that the uh, petitions you'll hear and, and help us with uh, are not based on today's readings, but on cycle A, uh, because somebody had a bad misconception and it might have been me. So will you please respond, Christ be our light. Christ, Christ be our light. light. For our congregation of St. Francis of Assisi, our brothers and sisters at Holy Family Parish, Las Cruces, New Mexico, the entire American National Catholic Church, Bishop George, Father Gidi, Father Pat, all our clergy and all who worship with us, that we may live as children of light in goodness, righteousness, and truth. We pray to the Lord. 
As we think of Samuel anointing David, we pray for our own candidates in grace. For those preparing for First Holy Communion, Brian, James, Kaylin, Derek, Cecilia, Joyce, and Marilyn. For those making confirmation on Pentecost, Rory, Lila, and Victoria. Guide them in their preparations and lead them in faith. We pray to the Lord. Christ be our light. For political leaders in our towns, our state, and our country, that they will open their eyes to the true needs of the people they serve and foster unity and not division through their words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Christ be our light. For everyone in our society, that we learn to reserve judgment in all things, knowing that through Samuel, you did not choose the eldest or the one greatest in stature when you chose David to lead your people. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ be our light. For world leaders, no matter their beliefs, cultures, or motives, that they will see the light that shines through all people and work for peace. We pray to the Lord. Christ be our light. For greater compassion, that we may be aware of the outcast and welcome those who, like the blind man in the gospel, feel isolated from our faith community. We pray to the Lord. Christ be our light. That those among us who suffer from addiction, depression, anxiety, mental illness, or physical ailments obtain consolation and comfort. We pray for all who suffer, and particularly for those we now name. Michael. Kelly. Lisa. Mahala. Residents of Brookdale Horizon and Van Dyke Nursing Homes. We also pray for their caregivers, that they will be filled with your strength and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Christ be our light. That those who have died find eternal rest in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for all who have left our mortal world, and particularly for those we now name. John Penjo. Mrs. Barquetta. Glenn and Theodore. Max. Lord, hearten their families and friends and help them accept their loss as a necessary part of their loved one's journey toward salvation. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ be our life. If you would please join me in praying for Owen and Cheryl, who will be ordained to the diaconate in the American National Catholic Church, that God uh, might prepare them and give them many years of service. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Christ be our life. We also pray for a special intention for the Parish Church of St. Francis of Assisi. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ your life. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Please turn to Psalm 471. Hosea 471.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's church. (laughs) With joy, Lord, we present to you the sacrifice that brings us eternal healing. Grant in your goodness that we may celebrate the mystery with faith and offer it worthily for the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through bodily fasting, you control our sinful desires and raise our minds to you and, uh, and you give us strength and grant us the reward of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the choirs of angels and all the powers of heaven worship it all before your presence. May our voices blend with theirs as they sing with joy the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might we bless you through Jesus Christ your son who comes in your name he is the word that brings us salvation the hand you stretch out to sinners the way that leads to peace God our father when we had wandered far from you you called us back through your son you gave him over to death that we might turn to you again and find our way to one another we now celebrate the reconciliation gained for us by Christ we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the coming of your spirit as we fulfill your son's command. Before before he laid down his life for those he loved for our deliverance, he took bread in his hands and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
So too, on that last evening, he took the cup, he took into his hands the cup of blessing. He praised your mercy and gave the cup to all of those whom he loved and said, Take, Take this, this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come, will come again. Christ has died. Lord our God, your Son has left us this pledge of his love. May we celebrate, therefore, the mem memorial of his death and resurrection, offering you the very gift you have given us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Father most holy, accept us together with your own beloved Son and through our partaking of this banquet, fill us with the Spirit who heals every wound and division. May that Holy Spirit pr preserve us in unity together with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem and Rome, George our Bishop, all the bishops and your entire people. Make your church throughout the world a sign of unity in an instrument of peace. Lord, as you have welcomed us here to the table of your Son in fellowship with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and all the saints, so gather us at the one eternal banquet where people of every race, nation, and tongue in that new world and where the fullness of peace will reign through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise and glory. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us to the experience of God's love and how happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you. When you say the word, I shall be healed. Here at St. Francis, each and every one of you uh, who have already made their first Holy Communion are welcome uh, into full participation in the sacrament of the altar. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please turn to song 199, Taste and See, 199. <laughs> taste and see, oh taste and see, taste and see. Of God, taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Glory, glory to God most high, glory, blessing, and praise. Rejoice in our God, who he is the cry of all in need. Taste and see, oh taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God, who has fashioned the earth and sky, who created the deep, who exalts the lowly and sets captives free. Who opens the door to all those who see? Taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste. And see. Come. Um. 
flesh of our flesh, so that we might live in glory. Taste and see, oh taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. Are you ready? We're going to do Who You Say I Am. If you are a listener of uh, Star 99 or if you're a listener to K-Love Christian Music Radio, you may know this song already. And let's all sing it. Come in on the refrain if it's all that you know. But let's all sing it like we mean it. Because it is true. It is on the song sheet, I'm told. Okay, even better. Now there's no excuse for not singing it. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in of his love for me, of his love for me. Who the sun set free, oh, is free. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me, yes he died Sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am, I am who you say I am, whom the sun sets free, oh is free indeed, I'm a child of God, yes I am, in my Father's house. There's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am. So as children of God, let us pray. God of majesty, you enlighten everyone who comes into the world. Fill our hearts with the light of your grace, 
that our thoughts may always be pleasing to you and our love for you always sincere. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the announcements. Please join us for our Lenten activities on Wednesdays and Fridays in Lent. Wednesday at 7 o'clock we have the book study on St. Oscar Romero, Pastor, Prophet, Martyr, authored by our own Father Kerry Walters of the American National Catholic Church. Friday evenings at 7 o'clock to Stations of the Cross, followed by our soup dinner. We have a fundraising concert coming up on April 28th at 2 in the afternoon, entitled An Afternoon of Acapella with Wide Variety. Our very own seminarian, Jim Hamill, will be one of the performers. The ticket price will be $10 and will be on sale next week. Please be reminded of our Holy Week and Easter schedule, the Chrism Mass on April 13th at 4 in the afternoon, Palm Sunday with Blessing of Palms and Procession on April 14th at 11 o'clock, Mass of the Lord's Supper, Holy Thursday on April 18th at 7, the Good Friday service on April 19th at 3 o'clock, Easter Vigil on April 20th at 7 p.m., and Easter Sunday Mass here at 11 o'clock. If you can't make it to Mass on Sundays, we also have Mass on Saturday afternoon now at 4 o'clock. The next religious education class will be on April 7th at 10. Please join us in praying the Rosary on the first and third Sundays of the month, and therefore the next date is April 7th, and the next Mass in Tagalog will be on April 7th at 5. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. <clears throat> I think that the tickets might be on sale today. So I think they're already printed, so thanks, Pete. Um, so uh, next week is the fifth uh, week of Lent, and then the following Sunday is Palm Sunday. So I'm going to ask you to please come and join us and wear red, okay? Because we'll be uh, beginning on the lawn. Uh, as you can see, Maureen and I coordinated today, right? So, uh, so, uh, so if you will come and, and, uh, and wear red, that would be great, and then we'll process into... Uh, into, into Mass here, so please join us if you can. Also, I'm going to urge you to join us during Holy Week. There are some of the most solemn and beautiful liturgies of the Church, um, especially the uh, Mass of the Lord's Supper and the Mandatum. So uh, it is customary on that day for the clergy of the parish to wash the feet of the, of the parishioners. And so generally here at St. Francis, uh, most parishes, they'll choose 12 men, uh, not sure why, but, uh, but here at St. Francis, all of you are welcome into the experience, right? And so, so please join us if you can, that would be great. Um, our Stations of the Cross on Friday nights um, are very prayerful ways and very intimate. Uh, I must also say the soup has been pretty terrific, right? So, so as you know, we, what we fast from during Lent, uh, we collect uh, on Holy Thursday, and then we give that to those who are uh, in, in greater need than we are. So please join us for our activities. I'm very excited about the concert. I just wanted, if you would uh, join me in welcoming uh, the... Hi, come up, Robin. If you would join me in helping uh, me welcome Father Vincent, who is here um, visiting, right? Uh, please. Uh, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> Robin was helping. Uh, it, it, I hope it's okay. I'm always uh, saying things about Father Vincent kind of without his knowledge, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh -oh, right. But this is a good thing. Today he let me know that he is in complete remission from uh, from a cancer. Thank you, Priest. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your prayers and uh, concern. And yes, I praise God that uh, so far I'm back in New Jersey right now to see my doctors. But so far everything is looking great, and uh, I praise God for that. And thank you for getting me. He also has this wonderful glow because he was recently married. So just so you know, right? So congratulations, Father Vincent. Congratulations. Thank you. You want to come up, Robin? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No? Not that far, huh? <laughs> so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth from this place in great peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Thank you to God. Please turn to Song 578 for Anthem 578. We 
are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow, what we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are grain. There when can we stand justified in what can we believe? No one else but Christ who suffered, nothing more than Christ who rose. Who was justice for the poor? Who was rage against the night? Who was hope for peaceful people? Who was light? We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are free. Then how are we to stand at all this world of bended knee? And nothing more than barren shadows, no one else but Christ could save us. Who was justice for the poor? Who was rage against the night? Who was hope for peaceful people? Who was love? We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to tomorrow while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sore, we are seen. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are clean. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.